Uh, they see the preachers driving nice cars and everything and think that's the that's the answer. That's the same thing the drug dealers do, you know. Yes, yes, Kids see the sir. drug dealers driving nice cars and they think, well, hey, this is a this is the the, the right uh, life to choose. No, no, it's not. So uh, they, they say politics and uh, uh, the uh, Christians don't mix. I, I think it should mix. We have a more uh, truthful uh, politicians that less corruption and everything in their government then. But, well, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. We've gotten away from our, from biblical principles in our lives, the ethics and the morals and and things like that to go along with it. And now we're reaping what we sow. That's what we've been trying to tell. We've been trying to say, you know, through our through our teaching from time to time. The countless times we've talked about the 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 atheist world. You know, the atheist, the humanistic world. This is what it's coming to when you remove all these biblical principles and people say, well, you don't need the Bible to have morals. Okay, well, let's take the Bible out, and then what do you have? You have everybody establishing their own morals, and then you have all the corruption that goes along with it. So uh, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah. Mark, Mark heard your compliment, so I'm, I, I know he appreciates you watching and, and what you said about his program. Yes, just, just as all the viewers out there, when they go to their church or, and see the congregation, look over to your, uh, your fellow uh, pu people in there and, and uh, look at their Bible, Bibles and see how much has been opened. It, they look stinking brand new, just like the clothes they're wearing. <laughs> right, right. Thank you. Right. All right, you have a good night. Thanks for watching. All right, so uh, also before we get before we get going, I know Mark advertised this, but uh, here's a muscle, a muscle, muscle and a shovel, and it is a book that we're giving away uh, free of charge. Those who are uh, not members of the Church of Christ want to give this to you. It's our gift to you, and so we want to uh, uh, make this available to you. Simply just let us know. Give us your uh, name and address, phone number, some way we can get it to you. And uh, we'll be glad to, to bring this book out. It's an excellent book. I encourage you to read it, study it. And uh, it's uh, uh, just a story about a man who was looking for the truth. And it may be very well that he's writing your story, that his life is your life. And so we want you to, to have this book, Muscle and a Shovel. Uh, just uh, let us know. Contact us and let us know you'd like the book. And we'd be glad to get one out to you as quickly as we can. <clears throat> I want to start off by, by uh, uh, pointing out this, this verse, Mark 16 uh, 17 uh, through uh, 17 and 18. This is a, a verse that uh, we're going to be looking at tonight. Most individuals are probably familiar with this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this verse up and, and starting off with this with this verse is because it is so popular, especially amongst the Pentecostal and the, and the holiness groups. But most recently, uh, it's kind of come to a new light. Uh, even CNN is talk, was talking about it because of this. This is the, uh, uh, the headline, the CNN uh, headline. says, reality show snake handling preacher dies of a snake bite. And uh, they're going to talk about... Uh, they. Uh, did a, uh, a segment on this show. This is a, a product of uh, the National Geographic uh, Channel. Uh, has a TV program that's called uh, Snake Salvation, and it deals with these individuals that that are uh, that that handle snakes and in in their services, whatever. Especially, I guess I, I've never seen the show uh, except little excerpts of it uh, like this. But uh, just listen to some of the things that they're saying about it, and uh, then we'll, we'll uh, pick up from there. This is, so this is uh, two of the CNN uh, news readers. So he had been bitten before, but Saturday the bite was fatal. This is the snake handling star of National Geographic Channel's Snake Salvation. He died Saturday after a poisonous snake bit him in church. Authorities in Middlesbrough, Kentucky say Pastor Jamie Coots refused medical treatment and died later at his home. Listen now to his son talking about his dad's final moments. I kept smacking him in the face like, Dad, come on, talk to me, get responsive. And uh, after he passed out in the bathroom, he never did say nothing else. We, I mean, that was his last words was, he said, sweet Jesus, and that was it. 
Coates and members of his Pentecostal church believe a passage in the Bible suggesting that poisonous snakes won't hurt believers as long as they are anointed by God. So that belief is based on this packet passage in the book of Mark. It says, they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We want to talk about this with Bob Smetana. He's president of the Religion News Writers Association. Okay, we're going to stop it at that. So that's some of the, the things CNN was talking about. Now, what? why is it that this is uh, so uh, newsworthy, I guess you might say? I think maybe it's because of the, the irony or the, uh, you know, the irony, the fact that he is a, a snake handler and he's preaching one thing, but yet he dies of a snake bite. Well, friends, while it does maybe seem ironic and maybe somewhat humorous, it's really sad to see that individuals are so uh, uh, caught up that they can't even see the own inconsistency in what they're believing. This is what we're dealing with, friends. We're dealing with individuals who are taking a passage of the Bible and basing really a large part, if not the whole part of their religion upon it, and not realizing that what has just happened had, was a demonstration that what they're teaching is wrong. Now think about that for a minute. When you read a Bible and you read, you're reading a passage of the Bible, Mark 16, 17 through 18, and you're reading this passage, you're talking about, well, it, it says we can handle snakes and we can take up deadly serpents and we can drink deadly poison and it won't hurt us. These signs will fall into belief. Well, if you die from handling snakes or drinking poison, then it ought to disprove the very thing that you're teaching. Now listen to what, listen to what the man that, that uh, is now dead, uh, Mr. Coots, I believe his name is, uh, listen to what he says uh, about their, uh, about his, uh, I guess about uh, his, his, his message or his, his, te yeah, his, te his teaching method. Listen to what he says here. You let him take me out. <laughs> well, let me... that. Let me get back over here to the line. We're starting here. I love the Lord today. I appreciate it so much. After an unsuccessful snake hunt, Pastor Coots decides to focus today's sermon around the importance of following all five signs. The Bible said that after Jesus had told them about the signs, so they went forth everywhere and the Lord worked with them, confirming the word of the sign of Paul. That's what that's for, to confirm the word of God. There is five signs in the book of Mark. Where it says they... Now, did you hear what he said there? He said... The, it's important to follow the five signs. Let's look at those five signs again. Let's look at those five signs again. In uh, Mark 16, Mark 16, verses uh, 17 and 18. Here, here we have, uh, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Let me just, let me get my Bible program up here. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak new tongues, there's, there's two, they shall uh, take up serpents, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So there are the five things, the five signs they're saying that we're, they're following. Well, he couldn't have any snakes, he couldn't catch any snakes, I guess it was too cold or something, so didn't have any snakes, so now he's got to He's going to reiterate. Now, this is why we ought to follow the five signs. It is to confirm the word. That's exactly what he said, friends. He said this is to confirm the word. Now, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that the, the, the signs that we're going to follow, them that believe, were to do that very thing, were to confirm the word. Notice this. Let's read on down to verse 19. Uh so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up to heaven and sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth, preaching everywhere, 
the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, when the man says that this is for confirmation of the word, then whatever happens ought to verify the truthfulness of what he's saying. He's going around preaching that, well, we can handle daddy serpents and it won't hurt us. And that confirms the word I'm preaching. But the man died from a snake bite. The man died from a snake bite. So what should that tell you about the message that he's preaching? See? What does that tell you about the message that he's preaching? He said this to, con to confirm the word. He's, he says to confirm the word. But yet, then he turns around and he's bitten and he dies. Well, what kind of confirmation does that give you? What does that tell you about the message? Now, the point I'm trying to drive home here that I'm going to keep reminding you is the fact that some individuals are so caught up in what they believe that even when they're shown the truth, they still will hold on to it. See, the devil's very, very strong. The devil's very, he's tricky and he's shrewd. He's very subtle, but what he does, he gets people to, to say that what they're doing is actually contrary to the Bible. It demonstrates that they're wrong, and they'll still hold on to the thing that's wrong. And so this is what we're trying to get people to realize. Notice uh, what uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Cooch goes on to say. Let's, let's continue listening to his, uh, to his sermon here. This is a little segment from the from the TV program. Shall take up serpents, then it says, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. I wonder how many of them got a jar of some kind of deadly thing and drank a deadly thing. Come on, man. Once you take a drink of any deadly thing, once it crosses your tongue and you swallow it, there's no going back. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, shall not All right, now you know what said? We're talking about drinking deadly poison now. We, we got snake handling and drinking deadly poison. These signs shall follow them that believe. They will do these things and it won't hurt them. They shall take up deadly serpents. Won't hurt them. But if they drink any deadly poison, it won't hurt them. The signs shall follow them to believe. All right, let's keep, let's continue. I heard them been through put together for a reason. If they harm it, Cody's have supplied the bottle of lye for tonight's service. But Big Cody has also brought another far deadlier poison designed to attack the central nervous system. Street nine. There's probably about 475 drops in that jar. I know people's died from it. The old man Williams and them mixed the same jar up out of the same stuff we mixed that out of. And one brother drank a half a jar at night and the other brother drank the other half a jar. And four hours later, they both fell over dead. It's so hard to get a hold of strict night. It is pretty powerful. Did you hear what he said? Well, some people drink out, they drink half a jar, and other guys drink half a jar before I let their dead. These signs shall follow, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any dead thing, it shall not hurt them. If they believe, it won't hurt them. That's, that's what they're saying. This verse saying, if they believe, it won't hurt them. Now, we've got one of them saying here, Big Cody, he says, well, we got some people that drink, you know, I, I, one half a jar, and, they drink, and uh, uh, four hours later, they're dead, and other drink out of it four hours later he's dead well did they not believe then because what you just said is if they believe the signs of all them that believe if they drink they it won't hurt them well it did hurt them so therefore it must not have believed the man said he could take up deadly serpents and it wouldn't hurt him but he died of a snake bite now friends do you see what we're saying here we're talking about individuals who right before their eyes have it demonstrated to them that what they believe is not the truth. It's been demonstrated clearly to them that 
their words have not been confirmed. Actually, their words have been confirmed to be lies. Now, in Revelation 2, let's just look at this for a moment. In Revelation 2, Jesus says to the church at Ephesus, He said, I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience, and thou canst not bear them which are uh, uh, evil, and thou hast tried them which say they're apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Now, if it is demonstrated clearly in front of you, you ought to be saying, you know what? I just don't see how anybody could continue believing that. How could anybody believe that they could drink strychnine after they saw two individuals that they thought were believers die? But yet, here we have this, this young man He's What's going to drink it. I'm scared. Because me. I'm a friend of God. Come on. How are you a friend of God? Come on. I'm a friend of God. Come on. You know how come I'm a friend of God? Because if I do this whatever soul he tells me to do, I'll be a friend of him. Yeah, come on. We got these 22-year-old and 23-year-old brothers. Yeah. All they got on their minds is snake this and the snake that. They done lost that zeal for God. Well, them people are crazy. Crazy. I realize what God wanted to do. Right, I'd rather a street nine jar right here take me out than to get out there, out and seeing in a car run me over and I die lost. Come on. Come on. I got another claim. Can't tell me God won't heal you. You can't tell me God won't heal you when you're down sick. People say the devil's going to take you out of here. You let him take me out. <laughs> I'm ready to go, boys. Not all people's going to drink street now. But if you can just be willing to die for Jesus Christ, you'll see things a whole lot different. I thank God for everything he's done for me. The Bible says drink any deadly thing. If they drink anything, it shall not hurt them. And I'm still here. Now, did you hear him say, number one, that there was about 75 drops of strychnine in that jar? Well, that's what, a quart jar? 75 drops? That's not very much. You know? Let's just let's make sure that it's really deadly. Why not drink right out of the strychnine jar? See that? If it's really deadly, if it's not going to hurt you, let's make sure that it's really deadly. Let's don't dilute it down. But the man just got through saying that he knew two individuals who died after drinking the same thing he drank. Now, just because he didn't kill him doesn't mean that what he's doing is is right. Two people that claim to believe died from it. Were they not believers? His father, I guess it was his father, died of a snake bite. Was they not believed? Look. See, see, friends, we're talking about confirming the word. Listen again to what, what, what he said. He said these, uh, uh, these things were, were to confirm the word. Now think about that. They're to confirm the word. That means to verify that what is being said is true. Friends, before we go any further, I want to remind you that these signs that we're going to follow, these signs that Jesus said would follow them, was indeed to confirm the word. Because at the time that this was written, or spoken and written, the New Testament had not been completely given. There was no written New Testament, not a completed written testament. And so they had to go about confirming or verifying the words that they were saying in some way to get people to, into, to, to realize this was indeed the Word of God. Now what better way to do that than to do something that was, that was not humanly possible and that the only way that this could be done is if God was with them. You see, God was giving his, his stamp of approval. God was giving his stamp of approval on the, these individuals by showing that he was that, that, that he was working with them. 
Notice this. In Acts 2.22, Peter, talking about Jesus, said, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. Now, how do they know that God approved of Jesus? By miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also <clears throat> know. God approved Jesus by the signs and wonders that he did. Nicodemus, Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night, said, We know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. There was the proof, the confirmation that what he was saying, that his message was indeed from God. Now, friends, what message needs to be confirmed by these guys that are drinking strychnine and handling snakes? What message needs to be confirmed? Do you need confirmation that this is the Word of God by drinking deadly poison? Do you need confirmation that this is the Word of God by picking up a deadly snake? Is, is that really what it takes for you to confirm that this is the Word of God? I don't need to handle a snake to verify whether this is the Word of God or not. There are abundant uh, uh, other methods and ways to determine whether this book is true and divinely inspired, not by picking up a snake. See? But yet, here's, here's what you have. You have individuals that have now died doing what they said they could do without harm. They have drank poison and died, which they said it would not harm them. And yet they continue to believe it. Now why is that, friends? Why is that? You know, I got to thinking about this. Oftentimes, individuals who cite this passage Mark 16, 17 and 18, signs of follow them to believe. Right? They shall, they shall uh, speak with new tongues. They shall, they shall speak with new tongues. If they uh, drink any, any deadly poison, it won't hurt them. Uh, they shall uh, cast out devils. These things are cited to us oftentimes as a proof that miracles still exist today. But did you ever think that whenever we ask for someone to heal, which is one of those five signs, demonstrate, confirm the word that you're preaching by demonstrating a miracle of healing. We bring someone to their doorstep who is crippled, lame, missing a limb, got a, 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 an obvious deformity, in their, in their body, in a wheelchair, crippled, whatever. And we say, demonstrate the miracle of healing. Here's the sick. Look, in, in, in uh, Acts uh, chapter 5, notice this, in Acts chapter 5 and about verse 15, look what the Bible says they did to Peter. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least a shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. This is, this is what we're talking about. This is how much people believed that the power to heal existed with Peter. So we know it could be done. But yet when we ask someone, would you please demonstrate the power of healing, we're told, well, y'all just tempting God. Y'all just tempting God. You won't get a sign. You seek a, a wicked and adulterous nation. Seek of the sign. Matthew 12, verse 38. Certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. And he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous nation, a generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to thee but the sign of John, the prophet Jonah. Oh, no. You see, you're tempting God when you ask for someone to be healed. God does it on his own good, sweet time. That's what we're told. Oh, you, you, can't, you can't tempt God that way, you know. God, God does miracles when he wants to. Now, wait a minute. The very same passage that says they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover also says that you'll take up deadly serpents and you'll drink poison and it won't hurt them. And we're told by these guys on, on this, on this uh, snake salvation show 
that handling snakes and drinking poison is demonstrating God's power. It would seem to me that handling a deadly snake and drinking deadly poison would be more of a temptation or tempting God than healing the sick. But yet, we can't get someone healed. That's tempting God. But we're supposed to believe when you drink deadly poison and we're supposed to believe when you handle snakes that that is a confirmation that, that you believe. You're on the word of the Lord. Yes. How do we know that what that man drank was poison? I don't know. Was it, that's, a good, that's a very good question. Was it tested? I'm sorry? Was it tested? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. And, Why didn't he let someone else supply the poison? Wouldn't that be the thing to do? Let someone else supply the poison. Right. You know? And the people who would get snake bit and was obviously getting sick from the snake bite, why wouldn't someone from the church do as uh, one of the five things that we're supposed to follow? Exactly um, right. That's, that's, that's the next point I was going to make. Come and heal the person that was getting sick. That's exactly the snake bite. That's exactly right. That's a, that's a very good point. I mean, the last one on the list is lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, the man just got a snake bit. Why didn't somebody run over and put hands on him? And go, oh, you're all right, brother. Pick up another snake. You know, if that guy had fallen out drinking the poison, would someone run over there and lay hands on him and they recover? That's that's an excellent question. Excellent question. And and th that's what I and that's the the point I'm trying to get people to realize is, you know, if you just use a little common sense, you can see that what these guys are saying and doing co are contradictions to the Bible. I appreciate. I come, Go ahead. I come from a small town in Virginia that has these churches like this that. Um, I don't know what you call them, that worship in this way. And they honestly believe that this is the way that they worship. I mean, they honestly believe in snake handling and drinking poison, if that's what they're drinking. Right. And as far as I know, I don't know anybody that's been to one. I wouldn't go to one. But I have been told that we have one in this area. If we do... Would you go to it? If they'd let me take a camera in there, I, I, I might. If they'd let me bring the poison. If they'd if let, they would what? If, they, if they'd let me bring the poison. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, that would be murder. No, it wouldn't be murder. They're, they're claiming they can do it. I mean, I'm, I, or let me, let me test to make sure that what they're saying is poison really is poison what I'm saying. I want to verify it. You know? But now, you would know that was poison. Real poison. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying they just let, let, let it be verified that it's, that it's actually poison then is what I'm saying. You know? Yeah. So, uh, uh, but, but where, was, where is this one in, in, in uh, this area that you, that you know of? Because most states, it's illegal to handle these snakes. Except in... Uh, it is. Except as in, far as I know, it's illegal everywhere. I, I don't think it's illegal in uh, Kentucky or West Virginia. I'm, I'm not sure. But I nonetheless... It is. But, but, but it doesn't matter. Where, where is one around here that you know of? I don't 
don't know. I've just been told by other people that we have one that's okay. in this area. Okay. All right. And I wish well, they would tell me where it was at. Right. So, well, I, t I, I tell you what, ma'am, you've raised some good questions. Right, you've, ra you've raised some good questions tonight about, you know, why is it that that uh, uh, this person, this man died when the very the very last thing that he was preaching was lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? Uh, that's a good question. Good question. All right, I appreciate your call. Preacher's call. But oh. if, you went, if you ended up in this church to talk to these people... And they brought out these snakes in this church. Would you honestly stay stay in that church to talk to these people? Well, I'm not staying there. I wouldn't want to be near the snakes. <laughs> you know, I may bring, I may bring me an axe or a hoe or something to chop a head off or something. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's that's the way I handle snakes. So, uh, all right. Thanks for your call. Thanks for your call. All right. All right. You know, that, that was a good question, the, the, what the, the point that they made. The very next thing was lay hands on the sick and they recover. So why did the man even have to die? I mean, that would be the confirmation that what they're saying is indeed the truth. All right? Is this, is this line for me? All right. Let, let it come through if that's for me. All right. Now, now notice, here's what we're dealing with. Friends, we're dealing with individuals that have a hard time facing the fact that what they just saw was not the truth. They have a hard time dealing with the fact that, or the, dealing with the truth of the matter, that what they're saying is wrong, I guess you might say. But you know what, that, that's something that people have always had problems with. Notice this. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 15, they had, these people had just witnessed the healing of a, a man that, that was lame. Everybody knew he was lame. Lame from his mother's womb. Everybody knew who he was. And yet, so they're asking questions about it. They're asking questions about it. And they said, but when they had commanded them, that's the apostles, to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. And they said, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem. There's no doubt about it that a notable miracle has been done. It's manifest. It's made known to everybody that's in Jerusalem. Everybody knows it. And they said, we cannot deny it. Now my question it's kind of the opposite of this. Why is it that these individuals who were handling these snakes, the, uh, one of them just said, I saw two guys drink this same stuff and died four hours later. And then the, the father handled the snake and, and, and he, was, he was dead. Now why can they not deny that what they just said is a lie? I mean, why, why do they deny it? Why did, why did that, that it just come to me? You know what? We're wrong about this. Now, I think we all see that. We all see that. We may wonder the same thing. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, I'd just like to say you're doing a good job. And if I went to a church where they had any kind of snake, I'd go out fast and I went in by a whole lot. But I appreciate y'all and I think you're doing a fine job. Okay. And I left my address with a guy I talked to, and he's supposed to give it to you about that book. Okay. All right. Appreciate you. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thank you. Uh huh. All right. All right. So, so why is it that people have a hard time admitting then that something is the truth? The truth of the matter for these guys we're talking about in uh, 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 in in the snake handling churches is that what they're doing is wrong. It's a lie. What they're doing is, is not in accordance with the Scripture. They just said, if, if, if we believe, we won't be harmed, and yet they've died. People are dying. Now, you're either going to have to admit that, number one, you know, so-called Pastor Coots and these other guys that drink this poison, either they didn't believe or that what they're teaching is wrong. 
Now, which is it? But I don't see anybody denying that. I don't see anybody uh, uh, stepping up and saying, hey, yeah, that was wrong. And it's just like these people in Acts 4. They can't deny that a notable miracle was done, but yet they're refusing to admit it. We can't deny it, but we won't admit it. That's their story, and they're sticking to it. You know what, friends? It really reminds me of, of individuals who saw Christ miracles. Now, friends, we've always said if you compare a miracle in the Bible to the so-called miracles today, they, there's no comparison. If individuals today saw, uh, saw a miracle, they would throw rocks at the so-called miracle workers. They would know that it is in no way, shape, or form a true miracle like in the Bible. But you know what? Jesus had this problem. Or it wasn't a problem with Jesus, but the problem with the people when Jesus was preaching and doing miracles. They would verify, they could see clearly that it was a miracle, but yet they just, they didn't want to see the truth. They didn't want to have anything to do with it. Notice this. In, Acts, in Matthew 11, Matthew 11, verse 21, the Bible says, he, Jesus said, Woe unto the, uh, unto the Chorazin, woe unto the Bethsaida, for if mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Why, would it, why were individuals just not even considering what Jesus was doing? It was like what we're seeing here are great miracles, and yet we're just dismissing them. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, uh, had, had been done in Sodom, it would have, rep uh, uh, would have remained until this day. See that? Uh, verse 20, 24. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Can you imagine someone standing there being privy to seeing our, our, our Lord and Savior's miracles, the, thing, the mighty works that he did, the, the, the very proof that he was a, a man approved of God, and then just kind of thumbing their nose at, ah, that's not a big deal. You might be saying, well, how, how can people do that? How can people simply see these things and then just focus on something else? In John 6, verse 26, look at this. John chapter 6, in verse 26, Jesus answered and said unto them, he's talking to the multitude, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. He said, you're more concerned about the food. You're, you're more impressed with the abundance of food than you are the fact that I did the miracle and I'm giving you spiritual meat. He says, labor not for the meat that perisheth, uh, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. He said, your priorities are wrong. I can't believe you're dismissing this. Friends, that's what I'm saying about these snake handlers, so-called faith uh, 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 demonstrators with, with the handling the snakes and drinking the poison. Right before their eyes, they're seeing a contradiction in what they believe, and yet they still continue to believe it. Now, you know what? I think most people, the, the people that are called in the night, have good, been good examples of this. They're saying, you know what? Yeah, we, we agree with that. And you know what? There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are saying the same thing. Yeah, those, those people, they, they kind of out there a little bit. They're, kinda, they're, they're real crazy. I can't believe that they see what's right in front of their eyes and then deny it. They see beyond a shadow of doubt that this man was not a true believer because he died of a snake bite. This man was not a true believer because he died of strychnine poisoning. And none of those people are true believers because that no one laid hands on them and recovered them, healed them. Why don't, why don't they stop and say, you know what, why, why did this guy have to die? Why did these people have to die? 
The very text we're citing here says they didn't have to die. You know what, what it tells me, though? It tells me that they are having the same problem as these people did. They're so blinded to the truth that they ignore the truth. And you may be saying, yeah, those, those snake handlers, those are crazy people. You know? Oh, yeah, they're, they're wild and crazy people. I, I wouldn't be doing all that. But here's the point, friend. You may be looking at them and saying, yeah, they're crazy for getting snake bit and not seeing the error of their ways. But you know what? You're snake bit too. Yeah, you're snake bit too. You know why? Because you can't see the obvious that's right before your eyes. You can't see the obvious that's right before your eyes. Listen to what, listen to what this man said. This is a caller from uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm going to skip down here to the close to the end uh, here. Let's see, we, we're at eight minutes. I think we're going to put about right here. Well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You have faith. Yes, sir. But you said you're in the Baptist church. Yes, sir. The Bible says there's one faith, Ephesians 4, 4. There's one faith. So if we're all the same faith, then we should all be teaching and practicing the same thing. We should. But we're not. So that tells me that I have to be distinctive and point out the differences. Right. Now, like, for example, when you called in, you said you're a Christian. Yes, sir. But you said you're in the Baptist church. Yes, sir. Now, what I'm going to ask you is, how can you be a Christian and yet be in a church that you don't read about in the Bible? Can you tell me? I'm not going to answer that. Why not? Because I don't think it's... I don't think it's important. Well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You have faith enough to be in the Baptist church, but yet you never heard anything about it, and you call yourself a Christian. Absolutely. But you can't tell me why you're in a church that's not in the Bible. God didn't think enough of it to put in the Bible. Church <clears throat> is not... A denomination. Church is not a building. I know church that. Is, I know that. I know that. Church listen, is I, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen. Who belongs listen, to the listen. God that believes. Okay, listen. I, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Will you stay on the line? No, sir. You have a good night. Okay. Okay. All right. So, hear, hear the man I'm saying. You know, look. I, I'm, I'm in the Baptist church, okay? The Baptist church is not in the Bible. It's clearly evident. You can go to the Bible and you can search high and low. We've been offering people $1,000 they find the Baptist church in the Bible. Not in there, friend. Now, that is as plain and obvious of a truth as a guy who says, I can handle deadly serpents and they will not hurt me and he dies of a snake bite. It's as plain as that man, what that man says is wrong. It, that's just how clear it is. It's as clear as being wrong about being able to drink poison and then dropping dead. And it's as clear and, 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 and uh, obvious as no one being there to lay hands on them and recovering them. And yet individuals stay with it. Just like this gentleman. He's in the Baptist church. Oh, I'm in the Baptist church. I don't have to defend it. Why are you in a church not in the Bible? You see... The devil gets individuals so caught up in, I'm this way and I'm not going to change. To the point that when the truth is right before them, they just won't see it. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said in uh, uh, Matthew 13, Matthew 13, verse 14, he said they just refused to see it. Matthew 13, 13. He said, Therefore speak I unto them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which, uh, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and ye shall not, and not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, 
and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart, and I should heal them. Be converted, and should be converted, and I should heal them. They just refuse to see it. Now, friends, I'm asking you, do you see, do you see just how clearly it is that these folks who are uh, handling these snakes, these snake salvation, are really dealing in snake damnation? They're condemning themselves because they refuse to see the truth of what they're saying when it's right before their eyes. We believe we can pick up any deadly serpent and it won't hurt us. Drop dead. We believe we can drink any deadly poison and it won't hurt us. Drop dead. We believe we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. No one's there. No one raised up the dead. Oh, but yeah, we would believe it. Why would you believe that? Why would you believe that? If you went to a doctor, went to a doctor and he said, oh yeah, I can recover you. Just give me, let me give you one shot of this and you'll be, you'll be as spry as a teenager. You know, you'll be back on your feet in no time. You'll be running races, running around the block. He gives you a shot of him, you drop dead. Oh, well, you know, I still have faith in this doctor. It's not going to take me but one time if I find out a doctor's killed somebody because he didn't know how to administer medicine. I'm not going back to that doctor. I'm not going to that doctor. Not back, there's no back to it. If I find out before I've ever been, there's no way I'm going to him. And if I've already been there, I'm certainly not going back. And friends, you are in a church and you're believing things that are not in the Bible and yet you sit there contently going, well, I'm not going to change. I'm, I'm not going to change. I'm fine where I am. I see it plain as day. A notable miracle. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, it's obvious Right before me, the truth is obvious right here. I'm not going to believe it. And friends, that's, that's what concerns me. And you know what? There's a lot of people that are blind to the fact that, that they're uh, uh, in sin. A lot of people are blinded to the fact that they are in sin. Look at this. In John chapter 9 and verse 39. John 9, 39. And by the way, this is this is the the context of the of the blind man. Jesus actually heals the, heals the blind man. And in John nine verse thirty nine, Jesus said, "For judgment I am come into this world that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind." And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him. Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye would have no sin. But now ye say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. In other words, you've just fooled yourself. You just fooled yourself. If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you're puffed up and you're saying, Well, you know, we see. We see, we're, 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 we're not blind. Oh, yeah, you are. There's a lot of individuals that, that look around and say, oh, you know, I got Jesus. I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And are blind to the fact that the sinner's prayer is not in the Bible. Oh, but I'm still going to believe it. I'm still going to preach it. I'm still going to shout, shout it and tell everybody about it. Not in the Bible. Church is not in the Bible. Are you blind to it? It's obvious. It's right there in front of you, friend. It's plain as the nose on your face. <clears throat> you're looking at the truth, and yet you're not even seeing it. You know, there's no saying that says, you know, if someone wouldn't know the truth if it, if it walked up to them and looked them right square in the eye. And that's where a lot of people are in religion when it comes down to the Bible. They think that what they're doing, what they're believing, what, they're, what they've been taught all their life is the truth. And yet the truth is right here before them. And they never, and they never search to find if in fact it is the case. Friends, that's why we're challenging you. We're begging with you, we're pleading with you to examine what you believe. 
Open up the book. Like the man, like the man called in, he said, you know what? There's a lot of people got brand new Bibles. The Bible looks brand new. Never open. Do you realize one day you're going to be judged by this book, John 12, 48? Do you realize this is the truth that can set you free, John 8, 24? This is the truth that's going to condemn you too. And, but if you're sitting there going, oh, I, I see what's right before me, but I'm still not going to believe it. Friends, you're going to be in a sad, sad state. One day you're going to wake up. You're going to wake up and you're going to see the truth. If you blindly go through life <clears throat> oblivious to the truth, one day you're going to wake up. I don't remember who said it, but he made the comment about a mole. You know, a mole lives underground. He keeps his eyes closed all his life. But when he dies, when he dies, he opens his eyes. You know what? There's a lot of people that have their eyes closed to the truth all their life. And when they die, their eyes are going to be open. It's going to be too late then. Friend, don't, don't close your eyes to the truth. Don't let what is obvious right before you pass away. There's one kind of church in the Bible. What you must do to be saved is clearly in the Bible. You must believe that Jesus Christ, Son of God, John 8, 24. You must uh, uh, repent of your sins, Acts 17, verse 30. You need to uh, confess Christ before man, Matthew 10, 33. You need to then be baptized for the remission of your sins and be added to the Lord's church. Church of Christ, Acts 2, verse 47, the Lord will add you to that church. If we can assist you in obeying the gospel, we want to do that very thing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If we can assist you, we want to help you in any way we can. Till next time, always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you always get a word from the Lord. Come see WGSR 47.1 in Reedsville, North Carolina. Welcome to our viewers watching us now on WMDV 44.1. 44.2 in Martinsville, Virginia, and in Danville, Virginia. And for those of you watching on AT&T UVerse Channel 47, that includes Rockingham, Alamance, Guilford, Forsyth, and Randolph Counties in North Carolina, our extended viewing area. And by the way, Randolph County, home to the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro. Thank you for making us a part of your day. Speaking of today, gorgeous day, weather-wise, really nice. Right now we have 63 degrees, a little cooler than where we were yesterday, but still very nice. Noticing people on bikes today out jogging, just enjoying the day. How long is it going to last, though? I know you're waiting for the other shoe to fall. Matt Smith has a complete look at the forecast in just a little bit. And don't forget, we've got this week's Rockingham County United Way report in this hour. We'll find out what's going on with them. That's all in just a little bit. A lot of news to cover, including several stories on what's going on with the Dan River, the February 2nd 